Here we are again, guys, another sermon on video. And uh, this week, I want to read you a passage of Scripture from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Or excuse me, verses 2 through 10. It says, Like newborn babies, crave spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you've tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a, a chosen and precious cornerstone. The one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall, they stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So it's been a while since we've looked at a passage of Scripture from First Peter, so I kind of want to give you a little refresher on its context, a little bit about what's going on at the time this letter was written. For starters, this letter was written to a group of people who were struggling. They were in Asia Minor around the turn of the century, the turn of the first century, and, and times were rough for followers of Jesus at that time and in that place. Christians were being persecuted. We don't really know the extent of the persecution, which is to say we don't know if their lives were in danger uh, because they followed Jesus, but we do know things weren't just hunky-dory for them. They saw many difficulties and hardships all because they followed Jesus. Jesus. And to top it all off, the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed at the hands of the Romans. And for, uh, and for fear of their lives, Christians had been scattered. More than likely, that's how this group of Christians found their way to Asia Minor. They'd been displaced after the destruction of the temple. But the most important thing about the temple being destroyed is that the temple was where they believed God dwelled. So with the temple gone, in, in their eyes, or the eyes of many, there was no place for God to dwell on this earth. God had no home, nowhere to stay here on earth. Can you imagine how devastating that was for people? I mean, it was an incredibly difficult time for them. And, and it's in the face of all of this that someone wrote this group of Jesus followers in Asia Minor a letter. And we know this letter is First Peter. And and with this letter, the author tries to build up, the author tries to encourage and, and lift the spirits of this group of people who were probably barely hanging on by a thread. And a part of that letter is what we're looking at this morning. And in it, the author starts by telling this group of people to crave spiritual milk, just like a newborn baby, so that they may grow in their salvation because they have tasted and know that the Lord is. Is good. He then tells them to come to Jesus, the living stone, who was rejected by humans but chosen by God and, and precious in God's sight. The author then tells this group of Christians that they too are living stones, being built into a spiritual house. That, and through Christ, Christ is actually the cornerstone on which their spiritual houses are being built. And for those who believe that cornerstone Christ is precious, but for those who don't believe, that stone becomes a stumbling block. They stumble over the very message that was intended for them. And finally, the author closes by reminding his audience that through Christ, they are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. He reminds them that God has brought them out of darkness and into his very own marvelous light. And then at the very end, the author reminds this group of Christians that once they weren't a people, but now through Christ, they are in fact the very people of God. They are the people of God. 
what a beautiful reminder for this group of early Christians, a group of people that were struggling so badly. And you know, the more I studied this passage this week, the more I felt like it has a lot to say to us where we find ourselves currently. First of all, like newborn babies, we are to crave spiritual milk. In the same way that babies need milk, we need God. In the same way that milk contains everything a baby needs for life, God is all we need spiritually. Let me say that again. In the same way that babies need milk, we need God. And in the same way that milk contains everything a baby needs for life, God is all we need spiritually. What a powerful reminder that is for us this morning, especially at a time when everything seems to be in turmoil, right? Because the longer this drags on, this shelter in place, this stay at home, this quarantine, the longer this drags on, the more antsy and uncomfortable people are getting. The more desperate people become for something, anything. And here this author reminds us through this powerful imagery that spiritually, God is all we need. God is it. God is everything we need spiritually. And I love that reminder for us this morning. And secondly, this is really the big one for me today. At a time when their place of worship had been taken from them, and more than that, in their eyes, with the loss of the building, God had been ripped from them. The author reminds them that God isn't in the building. God is within them. They themselves are the place where God dwells. They themselves are spiritual houses built on the cornerstone of Christ. They, the people of Jesus, followers of Jesus, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, God's special possession, building or no building, God is within them. They are the very people of God. Again, what a powerful reminder for us this morning. Now, I know that the Bethel CP Church building hasn't been destroyed, and, and I know that we are even close to getting back together somehow, some way in that building in the coming weeks. But I want all of us to be reminded this morning that with or without the church building, we are still the people of God. We are still the church, a royal priesthood, God's special possession, because God is within us. We ourselves are spiritual houses built on the cornerstone of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I needed that reminder this morning. I desperately miss gathering together with my Bethel family in the beautiful sanctuary that we have, but the Bethel CP Church is alive and well because we are alive and well. We aren't a building. We are a people of God. And when we do begin to gather back together in a building, and it doesn't look the same, it's not familiar because we have to sit so far apart and we can't shake hands or hug necks like we normally do, or or maybe you don't feel like you should be out and about just yet. Or maybe, maybe your kids are telling you to stay home and not get out and about just yet. And you're torn about coming to church or staying at home when we're able to gather back together. Be reminded this morning that church isn't a building. We aren't a building. We aren't a set of familiar rituals. or We ourselves are spiritual houses built on the cornerstone of Christ. God's special possession, no matter if, when, or how we meet again, God is within us. It doesn't matter if you're sitting at home on your couch this morning or if you're in the building at Bethel CP Church. God is within us. We are still the church no matter where we are. And I love that reminder for us this morning. I love you guys. I miss you guys. And I hope that you have a great day wherever you are.